In this episode, I'm going to show how to do a quick day to dust conversion. I'm going to take a photo that looks like this and turn it into this. Now, these are very easy to do. It takes a little bit of work in Photoshop, so I want to set the stage on a few things about this to give you some background on not just how to do it, but why, when, and how much to charge. That's what this episode is all about. For those who don't know me, my name is Nathan Cool. I'm a professional real estate photographer in Southern California. I've shot literally thousands of homes here in the local area, and I've also written best-selling books specifically on real estate photography as well. I do a lot of twilight shoots, but those have waned over the years because of this onset of day-to-dusk images. And we're gonna edit that here shortly, but before I do, I wanna clarify a few things real quick with this, is that they don't always replace a twilight shoot. If you're shooting something that has a stellar backyard like these, where you've got hanging lights and you've got a beautiful pool with all the various colors that are going on in it, that's going to be very difficult with a day to dusk edit. Those are great upsell opportunities to go out to those high end properties and to be able to charge for that. But charging hundreds of dollars for a comeback shoot that evening just to do those few twilight shots isn't always cost effective for realtors who simply want the one hero shot, the one single impact shot that really pulls people into the listing when they see it online. And that's typically why you would do the day to dusk. How much to charge for that? Typically, I charge one hour of my editing time. So that's a discount in compared to going hundreds of dollars out, but it's also not cheap. You can go out to Box Brownie, some other places, and you'll pay a fraction of the cost but you'll get a fraction of the results here. I'm gonna show how to do it high quality, first starting with how we capture the footage and then we edit that all together. Let's start in Lightroom. This is one finished version of it. We're gonna do our own from start to finish and that's gonna use a three shot bracket. This is shot during the day. This was at my typical settings, 250th of a second, ISO 200 F8. Go up one stop, darker, and we've got this at 500th of a second and then this shot here. Now, what we wanna do is after shooting this three shot bracket is we want to take the brightest picture here and we wanna warm it up. So go over here to your slide and you would move that way up to the top. So you want that extremely warm. Doesn't hurt also to up the exposure a little bit at this point, but you really don't need to do it too much. Just making sure that when you go in here, you don't see a lot of grain by upping it. Most cameras are pretty much ISO invariant. You won't have a problem. But having these three pieces of footage is what really brings the high quality of this out. If you try to do this with a JPEG that's finished, sending that to box brownie or something else, you're just not gonna to get the same results. Now let's go over to Photoshop. In Photoshop, I've already loaded these as layers and at the very top, that's our medium shot. We've got then our dark shot underneath of it and then we've got that extremely bright warm shot and we're gonna blend all these together to make this happen. A Couple other things too, I'm gonna to be adding in this sky. This was just something that was shot out of my backyard um, and I collect these over time. I do all kinds of, whether it's a day to dusk or a regular twilight, I recommend gathering your own footage for that. I'm also gonna be adding in some starburst flares. This is a very thing, easy thing to make on your own to make this little PNG file. If you're interested in seeing how to do that, just leave me a comment below and I'll uh, work on a tutorial. This is a very simple thing to do. Anyways, back to our day to dusk. The first thing we want to do is utilize these layers by using this bright shot for the front of the house. And the reason being is because this house was backlit. If it wasn't backlit, I wouldn't even include this shot at all. So only in the cases where the house is completely shadowed, that's when you would use this. So up here, we want to add a layer mask. And I like to go up to the menus. And here I would go to the layer menu, layer mask, and then I'm going to hide all. I'm going to go down here to this layer, use the quick selection tool, and then select the house. So just selecting the house real quick. I'm going to do that. Reverse my colors over here. That you can already see they're black and white. They're usually like this. If you need to, you just press X on your keyboard so that they're black and white. Go up here to the mask, press delete. 
Once you have that, then you do Control D to deselect. You can go in here and refine this to make sure that you got everything where you needed to. And it looks like we did. I'm fairly happy with that. Okay, now we need to start thinking about how this will look under a twilight. So the next thing I would like to do, it's early in the game, but I want to start putting in our sky swap. Now, this will set the stage for the rest of the editing, what we're gonna do. So let's go over here to this sky swap image. You can drag that in if it's already loaded in Photoshop, like in this case, just do Control A to select it, Control C, that'll copy it, Control A selects all, Control C copies, go back over here. At the very top, do Control V, and it's a new layer. Now, I'm gonna change that layer's opacity down to about 50%. You can see I did it here with keyboard strokes, but that was just then shut down to about 50% opacity. Using the Move tool, I'm going to move that up where I think it would look good. You can change the opacity to see what might look best in here. I can see that it's probably gonna be best if I flip it horizontally. So I'm gonna go to Edit, and then I'm gonna go to Transform, and I'm going to flip this horizontally. That I think will look better. We can see that some of these clouds are starting to show up. This will probably be very impactful right there. So let's change the opacity of this layer back to 100% and go to layer and then layer mask and we will hide all. Now let's go down to our dark layer here and we wanna select the sky. That's very easy. Just go up to the select menu and select sky. Very simple, typical of any sky swap that you do with no newer versions of Photoshop. Go up here to the layer mask of the sky. Make sure that our colors are black and white, not white and black. Press X on the keyboard if you have to to switch those back and forth. Hit the delete key. There's your sky swap. Okay, now we can start getting an idea how things will look as we start editing this day to dusk. So next step is I wanna work with the windows. That means taking this layer, this was our very bright layer that we warmed up, and we're gonna move it right underneath of the sky, right to there. Layer, mask, hide all. There's a few ways to do this, but I like to go in very close, use a polygon tool. You can see up here I selected the polygon tool, not the lasso, but the polygon, and I'm gonna draw some lines staying right inside where the windows are. I'm not worried about the little bit of frame inside there. That's gonna be naturally coming through if this were to have a glow, and I'm just gonna grab all these real quick. If you were to be up against something that's down here with these trees overlapping, just overlap those two, and we'll edit those out just a little bit later. Later, So let me go ahead and finish those and speed this up real quick. With all those windows selected, make sure that your colors are black and white, not white and black, pressing the X on the keyboard if you need to go back and forth. Go to that layer mask on that really bright layer and press the delete key. Press Control D to deselect. Now, you can go in and start refining these edges now. So this is where, yeah, we've got some stuff overlapping here. Just take your eraser tool, maybe about a 10% flow on that. You can see the flow up here is set to 10% and just erase some of that out of there. That's all you have to do. Make sure though that your colors are selected as white and black, not black and white. And then you just erase some of that. You can see here, we got a little bit, we can futz around with doing brush and eraser tool going back and forth to get this around that window. So same here, I missed some stuff with the polygon. I'll just take the polygon and improve some of that right in here. There's a little bit of touch up like that that will always inevitably happen. I got a little bit of overlap here too much. So you go in and do that. And by the way, we're gonna do these garage doors in just a second and some other things too, but I like to get these out of the way as soon as I can. So we'll brush in a little bit of extra here, maybe erase a little bit, blend this one. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, even though it may not quite look like it, yet we're, this is just one of the steps. Remember, if we didn't have it, it would look like this. Having it looks like this. Now let's work on these lights. So we have these lights we wanna put in here. So it's the same thing. What I'm gonna do is get in close. I know that these numbers light up. So I'm gonna put a polygon around here. Looks like that. I'm gonna reverse my colors, make sure that they're black and white, not white and black. Press the delete key while I have the mask selected once again for that bright layer. 
that comes through. Control D, D selects. Take that polygon, I'm going to draw it around these edges of this glass. By the way, this is looking pixelated because I'm zoomed in so close. So not a problem there. Once again, press the delete key, that's coming in. Now let's go over to this other lamp over here and I know they don't look natural yet, this is just setting our base. So I'll go in here and set these also in this area. So that's looking pretty good. Okay, now let's zoom back out here and start getting this to look more realistic. Those are our basic things that we need to have done. Now. This down here at the very bottom is our darkest exposure. It's going to be our driveway and we want to clean up a few things. I'm just going to use the spot healing brush over here and go on the driveway and clean up just a little bit of this. Don't worry about it all because there's going to be something very impactful we're going to do at the end which is going to make this driveway really pop. And it's an important point to note is that by doing things that detract from some of the possible unrealistic nature of doing some of this blending, it will make the picture pop, people won't notice it. Okay, now what we want to do is there's too much daylight hitting this driveway. So let's use a quick selection tool and we'll make it really big and let's select that driveway and also all that gravel over there. Now let's add an adjustment layer so that we have a darken layer. So it's going to be a brightness layer but we're going to use it for darkening. So we'll go up to layer. We want a new adjustment layer, brightness and contrast. And we'll call this darken. What we want to do now is to bring the brightness down. You can see that by first selecting that driveway, it made a mask on that brightness layer. So that's all it's doing here is then bringing that brightness down. So that's looking pretty good. We can now add in other areas we want to darken. For instance, this tree up here. So let's take a brush. Let's use that 30% flow that it's set on over here. And we'll just darken up this area here. Make sure that your colors are white and black, not black and white, so you can actually paint. I'm going to darken up down here too that would be going through that gate. So you can see it's now starting to look a little bit like nighttime, but we're not there yet. There's still a few more things that we should do. So to get this looking a little more natural, we need to have light blooming out of the windows. So what you do is you go in, I find that usually a 20, maybe a 10% brush does very well. Let's use our brush tool and use a 20% flow. Take it over a window like right here and just tap it once. Boom, now you got a little bit of bleed. You need more, tap it again. But you do this around the windows to where it's just overlapping the window just a little bit and it gets that natural looking light. We're gonna to get to those garage windows in just a minute. I'm gonna show you a really neat trick that works really well for garages. Also want light here by the front door. So I'm gonna use a 30% flow brush. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna then brush that over by the door so that we get that starting to come through. So that's pretty good. Okay, now we want to also bloom all of the lamps. So we had a few here, the numbers, that lamp, and the one by the driveway. So the same thing, you start blooming some of that just by tapping in around there and maybe feather a little bit of it out so that it looks like it actually bled a little bit. We're going to add starbursts in there a little bit too. That's going to be cool. Okay, so anyways, tap this guy in too so that he's got a little bit of bleed on there. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Now, Let's get these windows over here. The garage door itself is going to be a unique animal because what happens is these garage doors tend to bleed light up and down also. What we'll do is we're going to do a different type of selection. I'm going to use the polygon tool and draw a polygon around this area. This really helps too if there's a lot of little cutout windows in here, which is very typical on garage doors. Go down to the darkest layer and go up to your select menu and you want to select color range. In here you're going to see something that will look like this and what you want to do is select the color, that dark color inside that area. Once you do then you're going to see it change here. You can see a little bit more detail by going like for instance the grayscale on a selection preview and play with fuzziness. All that you want to see is that the dividing areas between the windows aren't being selected which is pretty much the case at right about that level there. Select OK. Now go back up here to the mask of that really bright layer. Make sure that your colors are black and white not white and black. 
press the delete key, and then revert your colors back, control D to deselect. Now what you can do is start tapping in that feathering on this area too. So we'll tap in a little bit of light feathering there, but we want more too that's going to be on the pavement down here. So what you can do is you go here to draw a polygon near the bottom of the door, kind of extending out. The reason why you're doing this is that you can take a brush at a 30% flow and you can overlap now the door while you're painting on this mask and you can see now it will feather that out. Control D, deselect. Now, I've got a line here from where I drew the polygons. So you just erase that edge. But you can see that this was without it and that's with it. So it definitely looks a little bit more natural. Let's come out here again. Now, we wanna add in those starbursts into these lamps. So go up here to the starburst image. You can select it all or drag it in. I'm gonna do Control A, Control C. And then I'm gonna go back over here and at the right up here, eh, it can be at the top if you want to, I'm going to do control V to paste it. Now, what you want to do is you want to change this. And by the way, it looks kind of funny because it's underneath the sky layer. It's just getting cut off there. You want to change its blending mode to screen. Immediately the black goes away. Place that over there in the lamp and then just scale it down to the size that you want. So we'll scale it down and say, yeah, that looks pretty good there. Okay, a little bit too much on that. Well, what you can do is layer mask reveal all and then take an eraser and just lightly erase some of the flare wherever you don't want that flare to be showing up. We can paste that again, turn that into a screen blending mode, size it down and then move that toward that other little lamp over here. So we'll zoom in there and get that right where we want it, right there. Maybe scale that down a little bit more, and then we're gonna erase some of that. So you put that where the light would be, layer mask reveal all, and then just erase some of that around there. There's a lot of things too you can do. If you want more blades on this, you can duplicate and rotate. Um, you can add a color layer so you can uh, change the color so it looks like something uh, more blended. But that's looking pretty good. Now it's starting to look more like a nighttime photo, but we might want to also darken up some of the house. To do that, I'd like to use just a separate layer. So we'll go below the window layer, which is here. Remember, this is the layer that has all our bright ones. We're going to go right here above this house layer, and we're going to add an adjustment layer. So we'll go layer, adjustment layer, brightness and contrast, name it whatever you want. We're going to tone that darkness down. We're going to invert the mask by doing control I. Then you can take a brush at a 10% flow and go, you know, I think maybe there would be shadows here. Maybe there would be shadows here. And now what you're doing is you're lightly tapping in just some shadow areas where you think that shadows would exist, but once again, our light is over top of it. So if we turn that off and on, we can see that we're just adding in a little more shadow just to change the shadows so that they look like nighttime shadows. We're going to do the opposite now for this layer up here that was for our windows and all the lights. I'm gonna add a new adjustment layer layer, adjustment layer, brightness and contrast. But in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a clipping mask to it by clicking this little icon here, which says that it'll only affect those windows. Now I can adjust that brightness high. That's where it would be, but I can invert the layer mask, control I. And now when I paint, which I can paint very sloppily now, because it's only affecting that layer where I'm adding this extra brightness. So I can add the extra brightness only to the windows that I feel needed it. You can see right there, it didn't bleed out over top of anything else. Now the next step, this is where we're getting down near the end. And what we wanna do is add this real intense driveway pop. Before we take this back to Lightroom and add the final adjustments that are gonna make this thing just, just stand out. At the very top layer, do a combination of keystrokes. It'll be Control, Alt, Shift, E. Now, what that will do is make a single layer of everything. We want to flip this layer vertically. So you go to Edit, Transform, and then Flip Vertically. Change the opacity down to about 30%. 
using shift and the move tool, move this straight down. Now, if you have your verticals well aligned, you'll see when you move in here that as you're moving it, it's looking like it's lining up. What you want is the bottom most area, like right here, to line up near the bottom of the house. This is gonna be for our driveway reflection. Let's zoom back out here and let's go layer mask hide. Now we wanna select that driveway, so let's select that bottom layer where the driveway was, quick selection tool, very large, and we'll select the driveway. Okay, you can add a little bit more in here. We can erase some of that so we can get these stones as well. Now, go up here to our driveway reflection layer, the one we flipped upside down, make sure the colors are black and white, press the delete key, and then revert your colors, control D to deselect. Now what you do is you erase where you don't want all that overlap. We just went too far, okay? We also wanna make it look a little bit more natural by adding a little bit of a blur. So you go to this layer and you go to filter and you go to blur and just add a little bit of Gaussian blur, you know, as much as you want, six, maybe seven, a 67 is too much, seven. Um, and that's probably more natural than what it was. So this is with the Gaussian blur, if we zoom in, and then this was without it, where it looked like it was just a sheet of glass. So here, this looks like a more natural reflection. But either way, you'd go over here to your mask and you would just start erasing some stuff very lightly on this mask. So if you don't want all that tree reflection, you wanna show the stones more natural, maybe it shouldn't be reflecting so much up near the house, you just add that in there. Now, did we get enough over here? That's where you can just turn the mask on and off and see if that's to your liking. Not bad. There's a few other things though I might change, like here, like I might change some of the top here, of that light, maybe darken this up, but I don't know how this is gonna look yet. So what I like to do at this point is do a first run in Lightroom by saving this as a Photoshop file. So I'll go File, Save As, and I'm going to go over to where this was, which was in this directory. Sometimes you have to do that with Photoshop, and I'm gonna save it as a Photoshop file. We'll do is add it a dash one on top of it. So let's go ahead and save that, and we'll be back over in Photoshop in just a second. Since that was working with TIFFs and a lot of big files, it did take a few minutes, didn't want to waste your time. But you can see that it loaded up here in Photoshop. Next, I would use one of my Twilight bumps on it, my presets, and I've got one here that I've been using this year. I'll go ahead and apply that, and that is starting to look really good. Now, it might have pushed some of this a little far, so it might be a little bit too rich. We can back down the vibrance on that, maybe back down the saturation. I like to add some magenta, especially to those clouds, some of the reflection. I don't like the green look. You shouldn't really have that at night. You can also sometimes warm it up a little bit, sometimes cool it down, depending on the time of day that you wanna to try to represent. Um, and then just playing with these sliders until you get something that looks pretty good. Now, something else that we still need to do is remove this sign. That's gonna be an easy content to wear, Phil. I won't waste your time with that. But if we can see here, is there anything else we wanna do? If there is, simply go back over to Photoshop, make your changes, and then go back to the top of your history and you'll be back where you were. But when this was all said and done, the final edit looked like this. Mm -hmm. 